how is it that when I start out a video by saying I'm not doing a week of Springers, everyone's reaction is, oh my god, is this the week of Springers? Is the Generations one next? No, I said it wasn't going to be a week of Springers five seconds ago. Did you seriously click on the thumbnail and ask that before listening to the first second of the video? It was just one review led to another, and I had a different one planned for the end of the week. Sometimes I review the same character twice in a week without dedicating the whole thing to them. It happens. But I guess by popular demand, since so many of you want this, it's Generations IDW Springer, a figure that once upon a time was known as the best figure, potentially, of all time. Yeah, it ain't that anymore, but that doesn't make it bad. He looks so damn cool. For a while, I was a little down on this design. I found the yellow chest a bit boring, and I still find the intentional kibble dirt-sucking stupid. Seriously, this literally goes through an extra unnecessary step to make it harder for him to get through narrow spaces, and it looks so much cooler without these moronic things extended. This might be the most criminal instance of kibble I've ever seen. Let's take something that doesn't have to be part of the design and make it part of the design so that way I can get caught on everything he tries to walk past. You gotta know everyone hated him growing up. He was just constantly scraping them and getting stuck, hooking them right in the armpit or neck. He had to get rumbled all the time. This is the boy named Sue of Kibble. However, once we get past that, we hit perhaps one of the most heroically proportioned figures of all time, and it makes you wonder how exactly it can turn into anything else. Sometimes Transformers are just actual magic, because how does this even work? This dude isn't blocky, he's swole and lithe at the same time. He looks more like a non-transforming figure than the red line. Pose is about the same as them too, but that's for later. I will say the one thing I don't think that works with his design is the shin wheels. Not only does it make him look like he's got elephantitis, but also it just looks like a real weak point of his design. Like, quick, aim for his legs, they're made of rubber and air! If he accidentally kicks an end table, his foot would fall off. Speaking of feet, the split toes plus the green with the yellow chest makes him look kind of like a Ninja Turtle. Am I crazy or do you all see that too? And once again, we have a figure that proves that you don't need near any paint to look good, because where even is the deco on this thing? There almost isn't one. The vast majority of this guy's color breakup is just plain plastics. He's got a bit of paint on his abdomen and then some highlights here or there, but if I were to mask out everything in the robot mode that's not paint, he would become a large monotoned blob. This figure has a little problem standing because he's got tiny, not very useful feet. And this was before ankle pivots were prevalent, but most of his build is well handled. And I think you'd be surprised by the number of pretty good ratchets he has holding him. I always say that just having ratchets is not a positive feature, they have to be used well, and I think these are used pretty well. Though, I do despise these little fin pieces just hanging off his legs. I never have any idea what this figure wants me to do with them. Where do these go? How is this supposed to look? They are as out of place as the shoulder garbage. Head is a little strange. I mean, it's exactly what it should be, and it has the classic and typical terrible light piping that doesn't work under the best of conditions. But what I'm specifically talking about is why the comics decided to give Springer elf ears. You know what? Given the colors and the lanky build, the whole thing feels like an elf. Or like a ninja turtle elf. That sounds awful. God, I never want to see pictures of that. But anyways, this looks exactly like the head he had in the comics. It's honestly remarkable that they got this this close. It's a great head sculpt if you want that comic flavor. And you could say the same thing about the whole figure. This will not fit a normal chug aesthetic because it's so blatantly based on the comics. It's amazing they made this thing look so much like it jumped off the page, yet it still transforms. Proportions like this really should make that not work out, but it does. And yeah, this is a great looking robot mode that you either need to have the right kind of collection for or not care if it fits a collection in the first place to fully appreciate, with a good set of accessories. Basically, thanks to the sword. It's a solid looking blade, though it may be too fat, but it's got a decent enough looking guard and it splits into the helicopter rotor. It's probably the best integration of this type of accessory of any of the Springers out there. The Sieges versions of this are relatively bad, being multiple parts forming pieces that coalesce into a rotor. It spins the best of them, but it's still too much of a pain during transformation or to keep around when not in use. This solidly pegs onto his back and those peg onto the Siege with spit and hope. The big spring has the second best of these, with more paint but a less interesting transformation on the blade, though it does spin about the same. Then he's got his gun, which is fucking awful. Fuck this thing. Few once said that this figure makes friction fire missiles cool, and nope, no it doesn't. The only setter missiles I've ever seen is Cybershark's missile from last episode. And that's it. That's all this guy comes with, if you don't count the instructions, which mine didn't have because I bought it secondhand. Posability on this thing is a mixed bag. Head has more up and down than normal, shoulders pull well more than a 90, but cannot be cheated for more, elbows pull like one degree less than a 90, wrists swivel, and he has Narcissa wrists. Combined together, you can fake a sword wielding wrist, though it means his elbow is going the wrong way. Despite the backpack, he still has a waist. Legs kick forward and to the side just fine, but basically back not at all. Knees pull the standard 90, and uselessly loose feet that have a toe down and basically no heel, so he likes to fall over. Like I said, it's mixed. Some of what he does is very good, like the wrists, shoulders, and head. Some of it is very bad, like the backwards on the legs, the elbows, and the feet. 
and the result is that this thing looks dynamic because of the sculpt and not because of the posing for the most part. It's kind of hard to get him standing in a way that actually makes him look any cooler. You kind of have a base level of cool that you are stuck with Springer here. So, as much as I praised the transformation earlier for being magic, the weird thing is, is that it's not doing much. It's all pretty simple and remarkably straightforward, which almost makes it even more miraculous. Like, how the hell does this thing take such a simple transformation and do so much with it? And while I'm thoroughly impressed with how well it achieves what it does through the transformation, I must profess that I have always loathed the end result. I hate this car mode. I hate it. It's so ugly. I never know what I'm supposed to do with these stupid fucking spoiler pieces in the back, just like how I don't know what I'm supposed to do with them when they're on his legs. I hate that you basically can't see out the windshield while driving it. I hate how it can't decide what it wants to look like. Does it want to be techno? Does it want to be art deco? Why is some of it smooth, some of it angular, and some of it greebly? I hate the weird offset headlights. I hate the giant splits in the hood. I hate the hideous duck bill this thing calls its engine compartment. I've always called this alt mode the mallard because that's what it looks like to me. I swear it wants to be an edgy darkwing duckmobile. This is why the sandstorm retool of this is a hundred times better, because its version of this alt mode is actually cool. The only thing I have nice to say about this is that it looks like what it wants to be, too bad what it wants to be is trash, and it rolls well. Transformation into helicopter mode is not as well handled. It feels a bit kludgy, it's weird, I swear there isn't a single panel that pegs in adequately in this mode, but at least this time I know what I'm doing with the tail rotors. But I'll take all of that happily when the end result is at least decent. I mean, this isn't great, it gets real fucky right about here, it's weird looking, and I can't tell if it's supposed to be mass shifting or what have you, because the windshield is about half the size it used to be. So if this still fits two people, then this thing is massive, and if it only seats one, then it's horribly cramped. But I can't help but feel like despite its numerous flaws compared with the near immaculate car mode, this is way better because it's at least a cooler concept and design. The car was, what if we achieved a bad idea perfectly, and this is, what if we achieved a good idea with some level of compromise. There doesn't seem to be any tail rotor, so how this thing turns would be a problem, and the underside is a catastrophe, plus it doesn't roll, but it does have a working rotor, and every detail of it does look like it belongs. Nothing seems out of place. It's the more enjoyable of the two alt modes, at least in my opinion. Though, this time, I suppose that's going to be pretty subjective because I just hate the look of the car, but I fully admit that if it doesn't hurt your eyes, it's definitely the more cohesive, more functional of the two modes, with the transformation going into it also being better, and it holds together more easily too. Plus, the helicopter mode is also something the Sandstorm does a lot better. So ultimately, this is a figure with a really cool looking robot mode, and not much else. It poses okay, but it's behind the times now. It's got a good sword with a cool function and a lame gun. It's got one good transformation and one mode that is cohesive but ugly, and another that isn't cohesive but looks good. I absolutely see why this thing was so well regarded for so long, but it kind of didn't deserve it when its own retool just one wave later put it in its place so hard. Sandstorm may have slightly more boring colors and a less interesting head, but everything else on him is better. Both its transformations are fantastic, holding together better, and completely ditching the parts forming, which only resulted in the alt modes being cooler, looking more cohesive, and being more functional. Hell, even the light piping was better. It actually worked. Hell, it technically even had more articulation, because the backpack jetpack was poseable as well in both robot and helicopter modes. Why do people still talk about this thing so much when that thing exists? The sandstorm is this thing styling on itself, and it just goes to show how much a tiny amount of polish or a better aesthetic really would have improved this. None of that is to say that this is bad. I'm happy to have this for robot mode at least, but it is a complete cosmic injustice that this is the figure people hold up as the pinnacle of the generations line as though Sandstorm doesn't exist. This thing is great, especially for the time. That thing was even better, though you'd probably be pretty happy with having either of these. And that's not half what I have to say, but it's enough what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.